San Diego Botanic Garden has a really fascinating history. Um, unlike many other botanic gardens, it never started as a, as a large estate. Instead, it was a farm first, and then it was purchased by a uh, couple named Ruth and Charles Larrabee, who moved here from Kansas City um, in the very early part of the 20th century. And they came here to have a very, very simple life. They had a very small home on what was then about a 10-acre parcel here. Um, and they, they, they liked plants, and so they planted the plants that they liked, but they didn't plant what you or I would consider a formal garden. It wasn't designed out by some famous landscape architect or architect. It was really just a very simple, very rural existence um, for the time. This, this place was incredibly rural in the earliest part of the 20th century, and they lived here for, for quite a while. And so the, the county of San Diego took over the land in the early 1960s, and they knew that this was an exceptional piece of land, and so they wanted to make a really high quality park. The county began to fall into some economic troubles in the 1980s and so they, the county began talking to a, a non-profit organization called the Quail Botanical Gardens Foundation. By the 1980s the county said you know maybe you guys could step in and actually run the, the garden as a, as a private non-profit um, and it did sort of formally really come to pass in the early 1990s um, when the garden hired its first uh, professional executive director, uh, a gentleman named Julian Duval, and Julian uh, was a really accomplished plant person um, and zoo curator, and so he came here with a real understanding of how to build plant collections and run a botanic garden. In 2020, um, San Diego Botanic Garden has become a, a major regional botanic garden. Uh, we were named one of the top 10 botanic gardens by USA Today uh, last year. Uh, we have over 200,000 visitors per year and one of the largest and most celebrated children's gardens on the west coast of the United States and really one of the most important plant collections as well now in the United States. So our plant collection is our backbone and our plant collection um, is very focused on the Mediterranean climate. We have to present the diversity of plants in a way that's exciting and new and fresh. Um, and so we do that primarily through our education programs and through the purposeful designing of each garden space to be accessible to the public. Um, so a great example of that are our children's gardens. Um, we design our children's gardens to be places of play and comfort for children and families so that they can be in nature and be comfortable in nature. We have a wonderful and brand new conservatory here at San Diego Botanic Garden. It's called the Dickinson Family Education Conservatory. So this new space is a place where we can grow the most amazing tropical plants, tropical pitcher plants that eat insects, um, really important economic plants like uh, chocolate and vanilla. Another one of my favorite places in the garden is our bamboo collection. And I love our bamboo collection because it's just absolutely magical. And it's magical because of the diversity of bamboos that are in there and the wonderful design of the garden itself where there's a meditative pond um, that really invites contemplation and serenity um, and thinking about nature and what it can deliver to, to humans and, and to the biosphere. Um, our bamboo garden is in fact the National Bamboo Collection. It is certified as the National Bamboo Collection. We have over 150 different species of bamboos um, and it's the largest publicly accessible bamboo collection in North America. I'd like when people um, leave the Botanic Garden to be able to take away a sense of tranquility first and foremost, um, but, but second, also a sense of empowerment. The Botanic Garden is a created space. What that tells you is that you can, you can create this kind of a paradise for yourself. And whether it's just you know, in your backyard or on your windowsill with some herbs, you, know, you can use the power of plants to uh, make your life better and you have that control to do it. Plants really create our sense of place and coming to the Botanic Garden really helps people understand how plants create that sense of place and I think by studying plants we really are studying ourselves and understanding our own place in this environment.